Hello, everybody. Welcome to the county seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. We are down in St. George at the Dixie Convention Center for the 24th annual Utah Sheriff's Association Convention. We are going to talk about the importance of an organization of sheriffs and how they impact you on your day-to-day -day life and the safety, health, and welfare as you as a citizen in one of Utah's 29 counties. There's a lot that goes on through this organization and some of it doesn't happen in the classroom or the conference room. Some of it is training that has to come out in the field. Search and rescue teams answer hundreds of calls each year in Utah to find, rescue, and recover people in the backcountry. Today at Sand Hollow, the tone is different as teams train for an array of rescue operations that they may be called on. The goal is to streamline the process that rescuers use to save lives when the real life call comes in. Over 160 participants make up today's search and rescue training with SAR teams from across Utah, Nevada, and Arizona. Teams rotate from one rescue scenario to another throughout the two-day conference, honing their skills, creating clear communication, and building relationships they can count on. Trying to provide opportunities to enhance everybody's skills for all the different things that we come up across the state with search and rescue with our volunteers. Your public safety diving is one of them, um, your high angle training, some of your ground and medical scenarios. Those are things that we try and do every year. Everybody work together, I think, just makes us stronger and makes us more able to respond to just about any incident so that we can do it as safely and efficient as possible. We're not working with strangers anymore. We're working with people we have been to training with that we know, and we know their capabilities, and they know ours. The Sheriff's Office is responsible for search and rescue operations within a county under their mandate of health, safety, and welfare. In Washington County alone, there are more than 100 calls for search and rescue every year. Most of that effort comes from a legion of dedicated volunteers. Search and rescue volunteers are vital to the community being able to fulfill its rescue mission. These volunteers are just absolutely invaluable. We could not do it without them. You're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars if I'm paying full-time paid employees. And then on top of that, to have the equipment that these guys buy and donate it on their own, and the training hours that they put in. The commitment for search and rescue volunteers will likely vary from county to county, but typically a member will have two to four trainings per month and easily put in 10 to 20 hours per week during the summer. Many volunteers also donate equipment, use their own vehicles, and risk their lives to help their communities, which tells you a lot about the people who volunteer for search and rescue. You gotta love getting the call at one o'clock in the morning that somebody's on top of a mountain and you've got a four hour hike to get to them and a four hour hike back and be at your, your day job in the morning. A lot of the smaller counties, our teams kind of do it all. Um, so we operate the off-roading equipment, we scuba dive. And you know, you might be on a lake rescue, you might be in a cave rescuing somebody, uh, you might have a high angle res rescue off a cliff. So uh, every call out's a new adventure. These trainings we come out and do, it's, it's a blast. Um, whether we're out scuba diving like we did today, they also had a bunch of guys up in the sand dunes uh, driving vehicles, doing some, some rescue procedures up there. And you know, we work with the best people in the world. If it weren't for the volunteers across the state that are part of search and rescues for every county, it would be very difficult for uh, the sheriffs to be able to fulfill their statutory duties. They're providing a service to the people in their counties, to peoples and people in other counties. And sometimes, you know, you, you see it and you go, hey, the search and rescue did this, but you don't realize the sacrifices these people make when they get called out in the middle of the day and they have to leave their job and don't get paid or leave their families in the middle of a birthday party or wake them up at three in the morning when they have to be to work at eight. They dedicate their own time, a lot of their own money, a lot of their own equipment to go out and to rescue and help other people in their counties. And really, I can't give them enough accolades. Uh, search and rescue all over the state. They are some very choice people. Which leaves one more important thought to consider the next time you head out into the backcountry. Because the life you put at risk might not be your own. Most of us are volunteers and uh, you know, we put our lives at risk. And so we just want people to just take a little extra time and be prepared before they go out and enjoy the outdoors. Just that little extra preparation 
uh, can avoid a, a situation where, you know, search and rescue has to be called. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the more cerebral parts of the Sheriff's Association, the policies and the procedures, and things that help make our communities safe and better. We'll be right back with the Utah Sheriff's Association on the county seat. Welcome back to the county seat. We are down here at the Dixie Convention Center in St. George for the 24th annual Utah Sheriff's Association Convention and Conference. Joining us for our conversation, uh, we have Sheriff Nathan Curtis from Sevier County. We have Sheriff Paul Wimmer from Tooele County, and we have the Executive Director of the Utah Sheriff's Association, Scott Burns. Why is it important for deputies and sheriffs and, and different people that are involved in the, in the sheriff's office to show up at a conference like this? This conference offers training that really isn't available to us otherwise. Uh, you know, we hit on all things that are specific to the office of sheriff and it benefits other law enforcement and other corrections organizations, but these topics that we train on are specific to uh, the office of sheriff and what our deputies are out doing day in and day out. If you're a, a city police officer, you, uh, you have a mayor that tells you what to do, you have policies that are handed down and you have to deal with it. When you're a sheriff, you have a community to respond to. Does that make your educational requirements different? From a legal standpoint, I think it uh, puts a lot more pressure on them. They have to be a law enforcement officer. They have to be a trainer. In many instances, they have to make legal decisions and policy decisions. And it's, it's, a, it's a lot different. And it's a lot more intense, I think, to be the guy, the woman, uh, when you're a sheriff. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think what happens is you see, a, I guess, a cross-section of what we have to deal with day in and day out, and it varies. And we do have the same issues that we deal with on the streets that every regular police officer deals with, but then we also have the jails, and we also have the courts, and we have all the things that go with that. So Civil paper service. and Those are all things that our guys deal with every day. And there are legal aspects that go with it day in and day out. And this is where we have the chance to really sit down and get what's the latest and greatest in all those cross sections. And I think you made a good point. Uh, a chief can call the mayor, you can call the city manager, you can kind of get a consensus of what we're going to do on this. They answer to the voters. That's it. Does that? I mean, there's a certain protection in that. I mean, there, do you feel that responsibility of the, the fact that y your job and your accountability is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the county? Absolutely. I think it weighs heavy on everything you yeah, do. Uh, you call it a protection. I call it a pressure. <laughs> it, it, it's a huge amount of uh, pressure mm -hmm. because... Uh, it almost doesn't even matter if someone lives within a, an incorporated city or anywhere. They will often call the sheriff's office because they want it from the sheriff, the, the law enforcement official they elected. And uh, you have an obligation to see to their needs, to, at least within the law. And so it, 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 to me, uh, there's a, a level of protection being elected, but it, it, it's but you have a, a responsibility to protect the citizenry from all of, all other manner of things. Do you think this office of sheriff, because it's so autonomous, is more susceptible to corruption? I mean, I know Utah's 29 sheriffs. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this about a single person here, but you know the opportunities out there. Is this a tough job? It's a tough job, but I will say it's not totally autonomous. We do have laws, and we have to obey those laws, and we have certain rules that we have to live by and there's lots of checks and balances too so we can't go out and just buy that million dollar yacht or whatever with the taxpayers dollars we can't do that but we don't have to sit down and wait and get permissions for certain things that we can say hey this needs to be done and we can move forward on those projects and, and those instances we can use our position to say this is what's right this is what's got to be done and we go do that we don't have to wait for red tape from city hall if, if you were to invite somebody to come down and attend this convention with you, 
What sort of things would they learn? There's something for everybody. Uh, there, uh, attorneys can come to our conference and take something back with them to their practice, uh, whether they're a prosecutor or a defense attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, street cops, there's, there's a, a track here for them to follow that is applicable to their day-to-day -day jobs. You know, uh, one of the uh, classes we have down here this time is bulletproofing your uh, investigations for prosecution. That's going to benefit attorneys and street detectives. Mm -hmm. And then there's an entire uh, section for the profession of corrections. And, and that's uh, one of the most important because that's not readily available everywhere. You know, city, municipalities, state police, they're putting on law enforcement training, but corrections training is a little harder to come by. And that is one of the biggest elements of our conference is to make sure we're getting them trained. Scott, is that the biggest area of liability for sheriffs is in the correction side? Uh, I don't think it's any question. And especially with uh, the proliferation of lawsuits, uh, they kind of uh, put in some measures in the federal court system to cut down on that. Uh, we're trying to do that on a statewide level, but I mean, you shake your head. At, multi-million dollar lawsuits that are filed, and I don't mean to sound heartless, but because someone hanged themselves. Mm -hmm. Somehow that is now uh, Sheriff Curtis's problem and Sheriff Wimmer's problem, and the taxpayers should pay third parties because a person in the dead of night decided to hang themselves. And to me, it sounds like the world is upside down, but they get filed every day. You, would you much rather, if you could give up a part of your job and make your life easier, would it be the jail or would it be patrol? But this is the thing, because we have this training in this conference and we share the knowledge and the information, you know, I have absolute confidence in our guys and our men and women in the jail because they do such a good job in the level of training we get. I, they do a fantastic job. And just because it's harder doesn't mean you'd want to give it up. It, it, is, it is a harder area of being sheriff. It, it, I don't think there's a sheriff that'll tell you that it's not the largest budget he oversees. It is. But there's a lot of reward. Anytime you've got something that's difficult to do when you have accomplishments, yeah. the greater the, the, the reward. And so I, I wouldn't want to give up any of it. I think I asked for it, I got it, <laughs> all of it. And, uh, and uh, as challenging as it is, uh, I'll take the challenges and the rewards with it. Well, so far we've kind of looked at the internal life of a sheriff within his department. I want to turn that direction outward when we come back after this break on the county seat, talking about the job of sheriff and their convention. Welcome back to the county seat. We are at the 24th annual sheriff's convention in St. George. We are talking to sheriffs about the office, the position, and the training. So far, we've kind of looked inwardly of saying, what is the responsibility of a sheriff to his own county, his own constituents? But in many cases, um, in every case, sheriffs in Utah bump up against another sheriff's jurisdiction. How do you guys work that interface? Boy, I tell you what, if it wasn't for the sheriffs that are my neighboring sheriffs, I wouldn't have made it as long as I have as sheriff. Uh, you know, I look, one of, one of my great mentors was Sheriff Decker from Millard County. Whenever I had a question, Sheriff, it, he's on speed dial, and, and there isn't a sheriff that I don't have on speed dial. When I have a question or I know that sheriff had something that he was doing either in his jail or his patrol or I heard him talking about something, Sheriff, tell me how did you do this and why did you do this? And it helps me get some input and some guidance in what I do in my office. Mm -hmm. I guess without a manual, you guys have to make it up on your own, right? No, what happens is you get elected, you take office, and then it is drinking from a fire hose, literally. And uh, you, you don't understand the value of this association until you get a swallow of that fire hose water, and then you come and attend a meeting, and you realize these guys are kicking butt on this. So you program them into your phone, you know, and, uh, and you call them, and, 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 you ha and you quickly develop the rapport with the ones you know on specific topics. I was going to say, is there a go-to guy? Is Absolutely. there a go-to guy on public lands? You call oh. Tracy Glover. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, search and rescue. You call uh, uh, Nate. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sheriff Curtis or uh, or uh, 
or Sheriff White down in Grand County. Uh -huh. uh, he does countless search and rescue operations. Uh, and it's just, you have these go-to well, guys. Got, when you got a drug problem, then who do you call? Not personally, but I mean within yeah, the right, county. Right. No, uh, Weber County, they got a great task force. Uh, they have a whole lot of information. Scott, is it, kind of, is it kind of gratifying to know that you're making, your association is providing the vehicle for all these tentacles to interweave and connect? Yeah, I, I think it's more important for these sheriffs to come to this conference than any other law enforcement group at any other uh, venue or forum because it's their one chance and they work very hard. Uh, I don't know how many of them down there on the phone working a case, working an issue. This is their chance to get here and spend some time together and thank each other and, and that's why they make most of the TV shows about the FBI and the CIA because they're always fighting over whose jurisdiction it is and who's going to take over this investigation. It's the opposite here. I, I have never seen more humble, cooperative, good people uh, than Utah sheriffs. So that raises another question. I, I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time when one of the Kane County Sheriff deputies was shot and killed in pursuit of someone. Yeah. And I, I was just there. Uh, and I watched the support from the surrounding counties, from particularly Washington County and Garfield County, come to uh, Lamont Smith's uh, assistance. Is that common? Absolutely. I, I know we had that one with Brian Harris. Uh, I know we had the one with Brody Young over in Grand County, mm -hmm. the ranger. Uh, you know, you, you will get phone calls from sheriffs that just say, hey, what do you need? Uh, you know, even forest fires in Garfield County with Danny Perkins. It was, what do you need? And if I don't get a call from him, I'm sending a team down and say, this is where you're going. So go find the sheriff and see what he needs. I, I, I called uh, the Sheriff state. Jensen in Cache County when they were looking for that little girl. Mm -hmm. And I said, is there anything I can do? Or, And he, he kind of choked up on the phone. He said, Scott, I have had a call from every sheriff and they didn't ask me anything other than what do you need and I told them and they hung up the phone. I mean they didn't ask how much it's going to cost, are you going to be able to reimburse me or what are the logistics, they just said they're on their way and you know that's that's what they're about. The very same thing happened in uh, Wasatch County with the uh, fishermen mm -hmm. that went into the lake and they were searching for them. Multiple search and rescue teams responded to that scene in order to assist. And uh, there's no uh, uh, bills, bills in the mail there, Sheriff. Uh, and at critical incidents, shootings, uh, 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 you, you can't investigate your own. So you have to have an outside. Uh, so if you don't have a protocol team within your county, you have to ask mm -hmm. another entity to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's not a sheriff in this state that I couldn't pick up the phone and say, I need you to do an outside investigation on a shooting in, our, in my county. And they'll come. Wow. We're going to take another break, come back, I want to uh, redirect the question. Uh, you know, in a couple of presidential uh, elections ago, they were talking about that call at 3 a.m. Mm. Uh, I want to ask you guys about the call at 3 a.m. because I'm sure you get them. We'll be right back on the county seat. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking to uh, two of the 29 esteemed sheriffs across the state of Utah, along with the executive director of the Utah Sheriff's Association. Okay, I, I want to ask uh, the question I set up for. You, there's nobody to take the three o'clock in the morning phone calls when it's a legal jurisdiction uh, issue in your county. You're it. There's, I mean, there's nobody else to call, right? Do you, are you, uh, how do you feel about the 3 a.m. phone call? Does it happen? Absolutely, all the time. Uh, it's it's always there's something going on a deputy got involved in something there's something going on in the neighboring county whatever it may be search and rescue a medical call something happened in the jail it's those are all those different places you get that call from yeah they happen they happen probably more often than uh, we care to discuss but uh, yeah they're happening all the time but uh, probably one of the last most significant ones I had was a municipality got involved in a shooting and needed an outside agency to investigate it. Well, I'm the only one that can make that decision so that call comes to me and uh, yeah uh, of course we'll do it. 
we'll, we, you know, we. Right, so here's we'll the question. Yeah. Have either one of you, uh, since you took office, had a 40 hour work week? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay. Just yes, I was in Florida last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was you still taking calls. Yes, and you only put he was still you. taking calls while he was out there. That's right. That's right. And only the important calls. Okay, very good. Uh, what do people need to take away to be of assistance to the Sheriff's Association? Because it really is in their own interest. And uh, to help their county sheriff. What, what can people do? Well, they could uh, always join the uh, 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 as an honorary member of the Sheriff's Association. And it is important to understand that we are much better together. And it's this association that stitches us together. And it's this guy that makes sure that, uh, uh, well, he's the one trying to hurt us all. And uh, it's not easy, but uh, he gets that job. But we are better and we're stronger together. I'm a better sheriff because of this guy. And I like to think that other sheriffs are better because I've been able to help them out as they've taken, because we got 10 new sheriffs uh, this year. Do any of you know what it costs to be an associate member of the Utah Sheriff's Association? 35 bucks. 35 bucks. 35 bucks. Yeah. They get a nice little sticker and all kinds of fun stuff. But the cool part is, is they make a difference. Yeah. They make a conference like this where we can come together and we can learn from the best minds in the country. We can get the best possible training on what's the latest and greatest in tr crime trends, uh, in corrections law, legal updates, and we have that right here. And it's because of our citizens, those people who support us. It's uh, support your local sheriff. Do you got, Scott, you got room for growth? For with growth? associate oh, members? Oh yeah, I think we can do that. My, my answer is gonna be much shorter and simpler, and law enforcement's under attack nationwide. It we is. really are. And you know what, if, I, if somebody's watching this and said, what could I do? And, and I know they feel it in their heart or think it. You see a sheriff or a sheriff's deputy or a police officer, just tell them thanks. Hey. Tell them thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, Utah Sheriff's Association, here is how you get to them to join as an honorary member. Thanks for watching us. Remember, local government is where your life happens. Be involved, be part of the solution. We'll see you next week on the County Seek. By the way, follow us on social media. You'll get all the good tidbits in between the shows.